Hi guys, Krista from Mosaic Party and Event Design here. Today I thought I would show you how to make these coffee filter tree peonies. They are a very simple flower to make. They don't require a lot of skill level. Super quick, super easy. They're not high in detail. Um, as you can see on the back, we're not dealing with a calyx or any greens. They're just the perfect project to um, use the stem to wrap around displays or add to gift bags, gift wrapping. But they also make great filler flowers within more detailed arrangements and bouquets. Uh, if you need just a quicker lower budget time-wise uh, flower to fill in for texture these make a great option so today i'm going to show you how to make those and discuss what materials you need first and foremost you need coffee filters the basket kind so these are basket coffee filters 8 to 12 cup you can use the larger ones you'll get a larger bloom I would not recommend using the smaller ones. The bloom will be too small. You also need cone-shaped coffee filters. The only pre-preparation you'll have to do for this project is with the cone coffee filters. You need to make sure that you color them first. So the yellow is to get the, the center stamens. I have done demonstrations in previous videos. If you want to go back and watch those to find out how I color my coffee filters. The coloring process applies to both the cone and the basket. But for quick reference for today, to color them I'm using gel food coloring. This is a Wilton brand. You can find it at Michael's or cake supply stores. This color is buttercup yellow. So it creates a nice golden warm yellow. I use just a little bit of this diluted in water. And then I paint my coffee filter and let it dry. And this is the result I get when done. So we'll be working with that pre-done pre one today. You'll also need scissors, floral tape, I'm working with a nice light green. You'll need floral wire for the stem. And this is what I use. I get it at a dollar store here. I live in Western Canada. This is from the brand Craft Decor and I'm working with a 20 gauge wire today. I prefer an 18 usually for my flowers however for this one because of the I want the stem to be nice and pliable for wrapping around displays I'm using a 20 gauge which is a little bit thinner you'll also need some tacky glue and because I'm working with tacky glue I like to have a dish on hand and a craft brush that I can apply my glue with So, let's get started. We are going to start by making the center inside the calyx. Sorry, inside the stamen area. So how we're going to do that is by taking our wire and folding it in half. I'm just going to use the warmth of my hand to, to pinch it together. You can use pliers if you want, but because we're using a thinner gauge of wire, it should be fairly easy to just do everything by hand. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop at the top. Okay, don't worry about it separating or anything like that. We'll get it all straightened out later. And then I'm going to take just a scrap piece of coffee filter paper. Um, I quite often have scraps from my cutoffs or 
You can use uh, a little bit of tissue or Kleenex for this part if you want to as well. And I'm going to just ball it up a little bit. Insert my wire. My wire is only coming to about there inside here. So I want a little bit of a ball of paper above where my wire sits. This is not going to be a pretty step. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be look like anything good. In fact, you just want it nice and loose, kind of like a hot mess, <laughs> and twist the bottom towards the, the wire stem so it holds on for a moment. And then we're going to take a little bit of floral, wire, uh, floral tape. You're going to activate it and stretch it out. And you're going to wrap this. And you're going to wrap right up to the top and covering all that uh, scrap tissue paper. Now, I'm going to wrap a little bit looser as I go towards the top. I don't need to bind it nice and tight. I'm also not going to worry about the top little area there. I'm going to wrap it back down. Make sure I'm adhered to my wire stem. I don't think I used a long enough piece, so we'll see. There we go. And then I'm going to cut just the tip of it off to level it all out. And I'm going to fluff it out a bit. And you should be left with something that looks like this. I'm going to set that aside for a moment and we're going to work on our yellow stamen. So I'm going to take this yellow coffee filter and I'm going to cut off this seam, this built-in seam that creates the pocket. You don't need that. And I'm also going to cut off this little tab that I'll these cone coffee filters come with. It just helps you open the filter. We don't need that. All right, we're going to fold that in half and we're going to fold it in half again. What we're going to do with this is we're going to fringe the top of it, but I don't need the whole thing. So I'm gonna cut just over half of it off and keep that top part. I'm going to save this for later. Waste not, want not, not. We can use that for another project. So we're going to fringe this up, but right where it's folded is I'm going to get my cut started, about three quarters of a length of it, or three quarters of an inch of a length. That way my seam is already cut. And I'm going to fringe this as fine as I can get. Now, a good tip for fringing is I take the the blade of my scissors and I rest it against my finger and I control the paper with my hand and my my finger and my thumb by resting it against the blade of my scissors I'm not risking cutting myself because I'm controlling the scissor blade and I'm just wiggling the paper just ever so slightly with each cut so that I get a nice really fine fringe well you're not supposed to cut it right off but <laughs> And you can see that way, because I'm pushing against the scissor blades, I'm not moving the paper much and I'm not moving the blades of my scissor very much. And I can cut a very, very fine fringe. Usually about halfway through, I flip it around and start from the other side. I just personally find that a little bit easier. It gives me a little more to hold on to for longer. Take your time if you want, but don't stress if you can't get a really fine fringe. It takes a little practice. You might lose the odd little stamen. Don't worry about that. And you can see. And I'm just going to fluff that out a little bit. Sort of separate them from each other. I'm not going to overwork it, but I'm just going to fluff it a little. And then when you open it up, have a nice fine fringe. 
don't worry about any color variations you have from coloring that actually just adds to the end product so we're going to take a little bit of glue I'm gonna get my dish and my glue which doesn't want to come out because I'm starting to run out a little bit in this bottle little tip I have for when I'm dealing with glue bottles in between using small amounts I keep the bottle upside down in a glass so that the glue always comes down to the bottle and is quick and easy and ready to squeeze all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my finger you can use whatever finger is comfortable for you to create a form with my stamen. So you're going to need to add just a little bit of glue on the outside so that you can wrap it around your finger. And it's not tight. I'm keeping it nice and loose. It's just a general shape I'm trying to create and my finger gives me that shape nice and easily. And I'm going to wrap it all the way around. And then I'm just going to glue up the, the edge. And stick that and pull my finger out and you can see I have a little tube for my stamen. Don't worry about it being loose because the next step is going to make sure it's nice and uh, secure. So we're going to take our center that we created and on the bottom inside of our tube of stamen, we're going to just paint a little bit of glue, probably about uh, three quarters of an inch inside, up inside, all the way around if you can. We're going to insert our stem and we're going to hide that little green spot and pinch the paper flower around the wire. Sorry, we're going to pinch the, the paper stamen around our wire. I'm just moving my finger inside and shaping it out a bit to create almost like a little bell. If you find that um, your center is a little too high, you can always just push it back. Push the steam and paper piece up and then just make sure the glue is going to activate and stick to the wire and we're going to leave that aside to dry. So we're going to move on to the petals. Super easy. We have three layers of petals in here. We have outer petals, middle petals and inner petals. So we're going to start with our outer petals and we're going to end up with pieces that look like this. We're going to need three of these, so three coffee filters. Okay. Now, I don't normally work with templates. Everything I do is typically freehand. Um, but I cut these out today to show you the general shapes of the petals that we're going to use. And you can see that they each get a little smaller than the one before it. And that's so that we can create a nice depth and dimension in the flower as we build it. So right now we're working with the outer petal. I'm going to put these two aside. And you can see that it's almost like we have four large petals this is going to be half of one of those large ones you can see it's all in how we fold the coffee filter so i'm going to take coffee filters there should be three of them fold them in half and then you're going to fold them in half again and then in half one more time So basically, this will be our whole petal 
This will be the half that we're working with. And there's no right and wrong to how you cut your petal shape. This is just a general petal shape um, with a little bit of uh, dips and, and curves in it. The only thing I want to comment on is that on the folded side, you don't want to cut too far down. You want to cut fairly close to the top of your, your petal line. On the open side, you want to come lower to create the actual whole petal shape. So you can see on here, the curve comes to right near the top. Down here, it comes much lower. And I'm just using that as a, a general guide. It does not have to be exact. You can see that's just a, a general idea of it. We're going to cut the tip off, not a lot, just a tiny, tiny little bit, maybe just a little more. This will create a hole in the center of the petals for us to construct the flower with. And then we're going to twist it. The purpose of twisting this is to create a little texture and ridges in the flowers. It gives us a little bit of a, just that look in the petals that tree peonies tend to have in their their petals. Don't have to twist it tight. You can twist it both ways if you want. And then just carefully open it up. And you can see that little snip we took off the bottom gave us a little hole, which will help us construct the flower. And some of your petals may not have cut down. So all you have to do is just snip those in. And you should have three. So we're going to glue those together. You don't need a lot of glue, just a tiny little amount. And you're going to offset your petals so that each petal works in between the other ones. Keep in mind that the hole should be fairly visible each time. More glue. And again, you're going to offset them. And that is your outer petals. We're going to set those aside and move on to the middle petals. So this is the one we just did. And this is the one we're working on right here. We need three of those, so three coffee filters for that as well. You're going to flatten out your coffee filters, fold them in half. This time, instead of folding in half, what we're going to do is you're going to find the middle point. I'm going to hold it with my finger, and I'm going to fold that up, and then fold that up so that we have a third. This is going to give us petal shape that gives us six petals. So I'll just quickly show you again. You fold it in half, but you don't fold it in half again. You fold it into thirds. Okay. And we're going to use this as a general template. So think ice cream cone. In this particular petal, you want your cuts on the edges to come down to about the same length on either side. And keep in mind that the last petal you cut was up near the top. This one should be shorter. So I'm going to come up in a wiggly ice cream cone shape, cutting down the sides. I'm going to just round that out. And you can see it's not the same as that one. It doesn't have to be identical. It's just a rough idea. We're going to snip off that little tip. We're going to give this a little roll and a twist for some texture. Open it up carefully. And it's going to look messy. It's going to look like crumpled paper. It's when you finally build it that it starts to come together. 
and you can see we have three of those. And we're going to glue those guys together too. Just a little bit of glue. Always offsetting your petals so that they're not lined up with the ones underneath and keeping your hole in mind. Work with the glue on my brush already and add that one. That is our middle petals and we're going to set those aside. Now we're going to work with our smallest petal yet and just to show again the comparison of size. It's quite small. What we're going to end up with is a shape that looks like a starburst. We only need two coffee filters for this. One, two. I'm going to fold it in half. Ooh, this coffee filter has a little bit of excess on it from the factory. I'm just going to snip that off. We're going to fold it in half and then we're going to fold it in half again and again and one last time. So we have a nice narrow triangle. And just like all the others, we're going to follow a general ice cream cone shape. This one you can come up to a little bit of a higher point. I'm just using a guide knowing that my largest petal was up here, my middle petals were sort of in here, and this one should stop right about there. Now, because you've folded this a few times, it's quite thick, so your scissors might not go through it. You could do just one coffee filter at a time. They don't have to be identical to each other. We're going to snip off that little bit. And then we're going to twist it up. Get that texture in there. Open it up. And you can see we have that starburst shape. We're going to take a little bit of our glue. And again, offset the petals as best you can. They're so small in this one, it doesn't really matter. All right. So now you have your outer petals, your middle petals, and your interior petals. We're going to construct the flower now. Pretty easy so far, huh? Just going to get my glue dish ready. I do need a little bit more glue as this is drying out. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to start with the interior petals because we're going to work from the, the center outwards. You're going to take your stamen and stem. You're going to add a little glue, probably a little more than you did when you were building the petals. You didn't need much glue to adhere them together, but because we're going to be pinching the, the whole shape inwards to bloom out our flower, we need a little more glue. You're going to insert your stem and go up to the start of where your coffee filter stamen is, the yellow part. And then from there you're going to pinch inwards all around that section there up until where it bells out. And you can see by pinching we start to bloom the flower out almost. That pinching inward is, is pretty critical for this particular flower um, to keep it simple and it gives us the rounded shape that we're looking for as it starts to bloom the petals outwards. So, and that's how it should look on the other side. Okay, then you're going to work with your middle petals and it's exactly the same process. A little bit of glue, insert your stem, and you're going to put the stem right up to that point where you 
your, your petals stop from previous and you're going to start pinching upwards, adhering that glue to the, the bulb of the flower, so to speak. And it's going to bloom out the petals a bit. And don't worry, we're going to go back and shape this all after, but you can see we're starting to get that rounded shape. If you wanted a nice smaller bloom, you could stop there. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to keep working on the uh, larger petals here too. So we're going to take the largest petals, add some glue, pop our stem in, work right up to that spot where it's going to naturally stop, and pinch inwards and upwards. I'll show you what I'm doing from the other side. I'm pinching up and in so that it naturally pulls my petals into a rounded shape. And then all we need to do is to add some foil tape. You want to get right up in here so you can actually close this up a bit. You want to make sure you get right up where you've been gluing and pinching and wrap that really well. Oops, my tape is breaking. find some days are easier to work with foil tape than others. Um, depends if I have stretched my fingers, believe it or not. If you're working with paper flowers throughout the day, most days you'll know that your flowers start, your, your flowers, your fingers start to ache. And it's really, really handy if you warm your hands up. <laughs> Forgive the pun, it's handy to warm your hands up. Um, <laughs> because your, your fingers and joints really start aching at all the small, fine movements and the cutting motions. And I find floral tape is probably the worst motion for me. I really feel it in here. All right, I never really finish off my stems until I know what I'm going to do with the flower because sometimes I'm going to cut it really short to add to gifts and stuff. If I'm going to put it in an arrangement, then I'll uh, finish them off. So I'll decide what I want to do at the time. No sense wasting my time now in my floral tape if uh, I'm going to end up cutting it anyways. So, And then I just open it up and shape it a bit. And you can see you have a beautiful tree peony. You can go in and you can twist petals, give them a little extra dimension. You could also take the end of a paintbrush or a pencil or a dowel and you could curl pieces. I wouldn't waste too much time on shaping these ones. These are meant to be a really quick and easy project and you could get lost in shaping. You could probably spend more time shaping and curling petals and, and your flower than actually constructing it. So unless you're using it in an arrangement where you need it to be more perfected, I would just finger fluff it and shape it that way. And there you are. Beautiful. Tree peonies. Happy crafting.